Well, hello my licans. Welcome once more to Ants Morning, a podcast that is also a newsletter. Or the other way around. I'm sorry I couldn't send out a February issue, but well, here I am with the March issue. And this one is titled Narrative Authority and Manures. Oh, um, content warning, I will be talking a bit about the war in Ukraine in the first section, so yeah, be aware of that, please. 1. Narrative Authority You know, if you have been following me for a while, I've been going to Niels Hilborn. Niels Hilborn? <laughs> Neil Hilborn's writing circle for almost two years, uh, more than a year, I'm sure. And for his last, for our last session, he wrote something I'd like to quote now because I think it was um, pretty on point. So yeah, let me quote Neil really quickly. As readers, we have an especially strong, implicit trust of a speaker's narrative authority. So when you are that speaker, it's your responsibility to use the metaphors and stories that belong to you. You might not be in Ukraine and therefore not have narrative authority to tell the story of what is happening there. But you are a person having emotional reactions to what's happening there. And since the personal is the political and the micro reflects the macro, you can say something poignant and impactful about however the war has affected you. I think this is an important lesson for artists, writers and overall anyone who wants to talk about issues outside their narrative authority, which is to say circumstances they haven't lived or aren't living. So I tried to apply this notion to the poem I wrote that night, and now let me read for you a fragment. The first day Putin declared the start of his special operations, I served a meme about it and felt okay because it was originally posted by Ukraine's Twitter account. So I wasn't technically joking about a war I'm not technically involved in. My war is not memeing through other people's apocalypse. This is not war. This is helplessness. This is how much is enough information to little updates. Should we keep the sound on, on the tabs showing the live video of Kiev's Independence Square? How loud is too loud when the siren comes up? How loud is too loud if I'm trying to live at the same time on the other open tabs? And I don't know what else to tell you about this topic, so if you're in a similar position to mine... Uh, the only advice I have is um, be sure to confirm where the information you find came from and if you can't find a reliable source for it, don't divulge it. It's the only thing I, I can tell. Two, pink, summer, white, stone crop. You may remember I told you about a poem I was getting published uh, a few months ago and it's okay if you don't because I tell you many things. <laughs> I told you about it on an issue that was titled Reluctantly Autumnal uh, but let me, let me help you catch up. Paranoid Tree's last issue just came out featuring Pia Salser's illustrations and one of my poems. Its Paranoid 3 issue is a scene with only one text chosen by the editors, who then look for an artist to illustrate the text freely. 
It's an honor having my words distilled into illustrations by the awesome Pia. How can the green and pink hues be the exact ones I was thinking of when I wrote the poem? I don't know. Magic. Thank you, Pia, and also Alisa and Jess for publishing Pink Summer White Stonecrop. That's the title of the poem. And especially Alisa for giving it a much needed editorial revision. If you want to read Pia's uh, interview and mine, you can go to paranoistree.com slash read slash vol hyphen 15. And if you'd like to get yourself a copy, you just go to paranoistree.com slash issues slash p slash vol hyphen 15. And there you can buy a printed version that is $10 plus shipping cost. But if you choose the digital version, you can pick the price that best suits you because Paranoid 3 is cool like that. The money will help, will help paying authors and artists, but no shame at all in choosing the zero dollars option please uh, it's there to use it so don't worry and if you do that the website will ask i think for payment info but it won't charge you so we got you three the cross guard them in the previous issue that was titled golden spring Red Winter, I shared a fragment from a poem I wrote during the Poems That Don't Sack class. Oh, um, you can go also to my previous issue if you'd like to know more about that. It was basically a poetry class I took recently. And well, I wrote a poem about my Erasmus stay in Southampton, which was in... 2015, if I'm correct. And the poem starts like this. Zero. It's my second year of college and I take an English test just in case next year I feel like being an Erasmus student. My lines are crooked. My voice hardly comes out. But I pass. One. The arm I carry my suitcase with is covered in bright cyan elastic gauze. The train seat I choose most certainly in lies. Carrot cake and chamomile tea taste better when ordered perfectly for the first time at a cafe. I hide a happy tear from the waiters. The cross befriend the gothic girl visiting Stonehenge but soon they return inside the cracks. Daily reconsecration. A few days ago, I uploaded the whole poem to my Patreon, and it's a free access post. So if you go to patreon.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto and look for five English months, you can access and read the whole post for free without subscribing or anything. There you can also read the Spanish translation if that's your thing. I don't know. <laughs> I left on my Erasmus stay carrying a tendinitis that wouldn't go away and I actually caught lice. I'm not saying England is a lysey country, okay? I just happened to put my head on the wrong train seat, probably. <laughs> I spent my first Erasmus week scratching my head, thinking my atopic skin was acting out, but nope, it was just lice teeth. <laughs> the encounter with the goth girl and the cross is also true, and it was a delight. 4. Magpie Feather Inanna Another thing I shared recently recently on my Patreon is 
drum roll. Brrr, pss, a video. Wait, a video? <laughs> yes, it was hard, but I did it. Uh, I, I, editing video is, doesn't come naturally to me, so yeah, it, it was a big thing. <laughs> and I'm proud I, I did a, at least decent job. So yeah, if you subscribe for one euro or one fifty dollars a month to my Patreon, you'll be able to watch it. It's a short tour through my traveler's notebook with its fancy magpie feather, its bullet journal and a secret manuscript. You didn't hear that from me, okay? Shh. Perks and Perils of a Long Blooming Since I recently glued a dry flower to one of my notebooks, let's talk about the Abelia ex grandiflora, or Linnaea ex grandiflora. I'm not sure at all if that's how you pronounce it in English, so mm, correct me if I'm wrong, please. This is a hybrid deciduous shrub obtained after mixing the Linnaea chinensis with the Linnaea uniflora. Its Chinese vernacular name, okay, bear with me, I'm, I'll try to, um, to pronounce this, Dahua Nuo Mi Tiao. It's rather commonly planted in urban areas because of its long blooming period, from mid-April to October, and sometimes even longer. There are a few abelia urban pots around my flat and I picked up a few flowers that fell after a windy day. And I dried them because I love doing that when I find flowers on the ground, you know. And it doesn't feel right reading what the Spanish Wikipedia abelia article says. It says where it's harder to find this flower is where the original species came from, China. And it doesn't feel right, thinking that this happened after we, love the Europeans, discovered, quotation marks, of course, the flower in China. It doesn't feel okay. It isn't just me, right? And finally, I forgot to say something in my previous issue. I didn't thank my Patreons, so big thanks to my official Patreons, Jorge, Rufi, Larry and Lucia, and to my unofficial Patreons, Nacho and Raul. Thanks to you I can spend my time doing the things I like doing, and you're the best. Thank you also to the ones reading the newsletter and or uh, listen to the podcast. Big love to you too. Of course, you're awesome. And you know how this goes. If you haven't subscribed yet to this newsletter, you can do so on tinyletter.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto. Oh, you have to wait for the email tinyletter will send you. Uh, beware, because it may end up in the spam folder, because of course. And click on the confirmation link. Then you'll be... Totally, absolutely, definitely subscribed. You can also read my previously sent issues in my archive, which is in that same link on the left down corner, I think. No, in the middle, sorry. <laughs> and that way you can uh, have a sense of what kind of thing I talk about in here. So, yeah, until next month, bye!